Hello there Taurus, welcome to your reading. I want to talk a little bit about the solar return uh, time frame and I feel like it's even uh, more true for especially you know if you're like past your Saturn return which is um, traditionally after 31 years old. Um, solar return time frame can be um, very powerful and they've always been powerful you know like even when you're at the age of five but i feel like when we be after we have experienced the hardship that is uh the saturn transit um we become a little bit more aware of our sense of um, mortality we become a, more aware of each passing year and this is not meant to be depressing it's meant to you know shed light on a situation where i feel like the solar return time frame is when you know your sun is transiting your natal sun so for example if you have sun in taurus the natal sun is transiting through the taurus time frame and it signifies the sun coming back to meet its maker okay so this is a really really good time for us to take stock uh, of where we've been and where we're trying to go and I also feel for many of you, um, for this month, memories plays a very, very vital part. And I feel like for many of you, there's this sense about wanting to relive a childhood, uh, wanting to kind of like go back to a simpler time, wanting to um, kind of like relive that whatever past experience where you were that starry-eyed kid before life and, you know, responsibilities, um, were imposed upon you and you start to feel the weight of just you know existence um you wanted to go back or capture the memories and the feelings of that simpler time when you might have been a child and you saw something that really made you just starry-eyed made your eyes widen with wonder made you feel alive or made you believe in magic i i feel so that's what i'm sensing so I had, um, I saw two, two images for you while I was shuffling the cards for your uh, reading for this month, uh, mid-month actually. The first one is, um, I see this two people. Um, so it's an outdoor scene. There's a, a bonfire, like a, a, a bonfire and there's like a tent, okay? It's like one of those old school tent where it's like rectangular, okay? And uh, inside the tent is um, there are two people sitting and talking and there's like a light in between them like an oil lantern it's like olden times okay and all I can see is the silhouette of the people like their their shadows so I can't make out if it's a man um, if it's if they're both male like if one is male or one is female or one is a child or and one's adult, an adult but I feel like they're they're just excitedly talking so they have their little horse in the background that they have possibly ridden um, in order to get to that location. They're camping out for the night and they're so animatedly, excitedly talking. In the background there's a moon so it signifies to me that, you know, it's late in the night. They're talking and conversing and just very, very excited. They have a lot of stories to share with each other. But it seems like they're both traveling together on this voyage. So they might have been talking all night, all day and yet they're still talking like they're they're just i feel like you've met somebody that you just you know you you can talk all day all night too and not get bored of each other which is really rare in this world i feel so there's definitely a lot of commotion a lot of um, animated conversations a lot to share with another person a lot of catching up and just a lot of communication happening uh, between you and uh, another person and I feel like there might be even that um, you know you're you're finding somebody that you can't be away from or you're finding somebody that it's just like right up your alley you can talk and talk and talk and not get bored of one another and never run out of things to say because you know awkward silences are really awkward and I feel like you you found somebody that no matter what you can talk to them all night, all day. So anyways, I'm belaboring the point, okay? So that's the first scene. The second scene is um, I see a circus 
you know, the, the circus tent with a lot of colors and a lot of different colored flags is being resurrected. It reminds me almost like the Cirque du Soleil, but it's a little bit smaller. And I feel like this is more of a 18th century type of a circus. So it, it's getting resurrected. It's getting like blown up. Okay. So it's, it's, it's going up. And then I see a procession of people heading into the circus. Some of them have children and they have like cotton candy or they have like uh, other um, I don't know what, what they have. Balloons. There we go. So they, they're 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 heading into the the door, the opening flaps of the circus. And in there, I see like an elephant. Okay, the the elephant on the the little unicycle, which is really weird. And elephants. People say that you know an elephant never forgets. So immediately, what I saw was. Um, you're either going in there because it the, the tent is like symbolic of your memory bank, okay? Going in there to retrieve stories, to retrieve and, and review and go through your um, Rolodex, to go through especially your, your memory bank, to once again go back in that moment in time when you were starry-eyed and, and very like hopeful and you had a lot of things like just... Um, a lot of things that made you just, you know, wide-eyed with wonder, okay? You're trying to capture that moment again. And I feel almost like it. things have been a little bit hard. I feel like for the past few months, many of you might have been in some type of a situation where you're just doing your own thing because you feel like whoever was around you uh, didn't get you, like, you know, quote unquote, get you. Like they didn't understand you. Um, conversations might have dried up and there might not have been a lot of commonalities between you and that person. And as a result, you just feel like, the you feel a little bit emotionally estranged. You feel a little bit like the conversation might have dried up. And so now you're reverting back to a previous moment in time where things were new, where you were filled with wonder and bewilderment, okay? So that's what I'm sensing. I'm going to pull out three more cards and then we'll go into your reading for this, um, this month. So can you show me Ten of Swords? Okay, who are we dealing with here? not showing me much who are we dealing with okay um, I just did the Aries reading and this image um, reminds me of the Aries reading if you're dealing with an Aries there might have been some new information coming to light regarding you know third parties okay so I'm definitely seeing that um, I feel like there might be a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo we have here the Ten of Swords, which is a situation where somebody might have reneged on their responsibilities, okay? And in a more severe way, somebody stepping out on a relationship because we have here the, the Seven of Swords. And then we also have the Two of Coins juggling. We also have Six of Coins. This is a situation where there might have been some financial mis misdealings associated with a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo so that's um that's what I'm getting first of all so I just wanted to clear that up okay so let me just talk about the energy for this uh, this month for you guys um, I feel like there is a coming together between you and another person um, and I definitely see that sense of you know having a lot of discussions there's a lot of activity, a flurry of things happening around you. And I feel like that might be why you are excitedly having these conversations with another person. For some of you, this could be brewing all around you in your work environment. We have here the Seven of Pentacles, and this is the work card, okay? Um, and I feel like there is somebody in your work environment that you have been heavily communicating with because there are so many activities and things and events happening and you're trying to make sense of it i see you almost like a, as a bobblehead you know every time we move a bobblehead from one place to the next their head bobs back and forth until it it runs out of momentum right 
I feel like you're plopped down here, you're plopped here, you're plopped here. It's it's like you're being you're, you're you're wearing many many hats in your work environment. You're you're putting out fires in your work environment. You're doing a lot of things, um, taking a lot on a lot of responsibilities, and wearing many many hats. Where you have to shift gears from doing this today and doing a, another task the next day, or even within the same day. So I feel like there's a flurry of activities, a flurry of events. You're interacting heavily with a lot of other people and what I'm seeing as well we have here the ace of swords and the seven of coins okay so this is kind of like scoping out the territory um, I'm also feeling as well really 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 catching somebody's eyes okay like catching somebody's attention or somebody's really capturing your attention and for many of you I feel like this is some type of a workplace flirtation workplace romance workplace attraction that's coming in strongly in the picture I'm also feeling you kind of uh, weighing out your options okay doing this weighing out the pros and cons okay so I, I see this as sort of like somebody snaps their figure their finger and then the other person comes running so I feel like you're definitely really heavily in charge in your work environment where people do what you ask they're answering your beck and call and I feel like if it's a person that um, that you're dealing with it's like clockwork whenever you um, you whenever for example whenever you text them they text right back whenever you call them they call right back whenever you ask them something they always respond so it's like clockwork and it's somebody who's very very reliable somebody who's very interested and somebody who's very consistent so you're dealing with someone who's like very much about clockwork which is really nice and especially for you guys um, earth signs love that consistency and they love to be in an environment where they don't have to play the guessing game I mean every one of us likes a little bit of unpredictability and in a sense a little bit just a little bit of drama to keep things interesting but I feel like you're dealing with someone who's like very much on the same page as you they want to communicate as much as you do and they're really enamored and smitten by you where if you send them a text they send a text right back and so you don't have to play that guessing game so I feel like you're dealing with a person who's very emotionally really really mature okay we have here the king of cups for some of you this could be a water sign but I'm seeing a lot of signs here so I feel like they're very emotionally um, mature and when a person is very emotionally mature they don't have to play games they tell you how they feel they don't push you they're not one to force you to make a decision they don't give out ultimatums they just simply let you know how they feel they put their feelings on the line because they realize you know the sense of mortality like life's too short why play games why beat around the bush they're letting you know how they feel and I feel like this is somebody that you've seen nothing but consistency from their end and I feel like that quality makes them really attractive in your eyes okay this is somebody as well I'm sensing that they might be a little bit at a distance from you so you you don't get to see them on a regular basis so for those of you who might be working they might be a contractor they come into your work environment a few days out of the week and then they're gone or it's somebody you're communicating with from a distance who might be in the same industry who might you know um, like I, I feel like you know same agency different umbrella like under the same umbrella different agencies they're not always around I also see a lot of remote communication but either way there's a lot of communication between you and this person and they're very very consistent this is somebody as well the two of wands is what I um, is what propel compelled me compelled me um, to say that they might be at a distance from you because this is a relationship card but one person is not in the picture but um, I said propel because I'm, I'm seeing here this swift movement the globe is being you know moved around okay so I feel time difference for many of you between you and this person I'm also seeing potentially um, making travel plans planning to come see each other as well that's coming up and then I'm also sensing as well for many of you there might have been some type of a I'm seeing a love 
really blossoming but I'm, I'm feeling like it's under the surface like there is definitely a very strong undeniable attraction it's masked by work and obligation so you know somebody might really 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 want to communicate with you and they they might work with you and so they rather than just telling you you know hey i really enjoy your company why don't we talk more um they come to you and they ask work related questions because they don't really know how to approach you you might do the same to them because i feel like a lot of tourist people do that as well so you might be doing the same thing to them so i feel like that yes there is you know mutual love mutual attraction this is a really strong attraction card for me everything is under the surface there's that heart under underneath and then there is a stoppage in communication okay so it's like things are felt very strongly it's almost like you can cut the the tension in the room with a knife and things are felt like i'm seeing and this is a very tactile imagery things are felt on your skin like you feel the chemistry you feel that magnetic attraction like you you kind of zing each other but things are not discussed okay like the attraction is not discussed things are not talked about okay and so you might you know stay up all night talking about everything everything else except the emotion so that that's what i'm, I'm getting here I feel for many of you, we have here the Hierophant, this is your card. You're in an environment where you're shaping a lot of people, you're mentoring a lot of people, you're teaching a lot of people. And so you're in a position where you have to be really careful, not that this is a warning, but I feel like because you're so visible, because you're shaping, you, you have huge influence, you're shaping young minds. You, you're very, very careful about what you do. And I feel like, you know, the, 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 the nature of the work is really keeping you on the straight and narrow path. It's keeping you from doing the things that are morally, um, it, it's keeping you away from the things that are morally wrong. And so you feel like, I'm sensing there are things that you wanna do but you're 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 very very um, you, you have a really strong ethical code that you abide by because personally it's what you abide by it's like your own personal moral code but then I also feel like because of the work that you do the nature of the work that you do it even forces you you know to be more straight and narrow because you're a huge you have a huge influence on other people so you want a good set a good example you know this could be um because you're a teacher it could be because you're a parent it could be because you're a mentor it could be a myriad of things but like you're trying your best not to stray not to do the wrong things because there's a lot riding on it but also personally because that's just you know your moral ethical code and then i'm also sensing there might have been a lot of things that you wanted to do but you're just like you, you were very, very risk averse, okay? Um, I'm also feeling as well. Give me just a moment. I'm, I'm trying to figure out which way this energy is coming from. Like if it's you or if it's the other person. I feel like there is a, a message coming in. Somebody waited too long. Somebody waited too long. Somebody feels like somebody feels like you took too long, they waited too long, or they felt like you weren't reciprocating and so they walked away. And this is strongly love because uh, my heart hurts. So let me just say this, okay? This is the other person that you're dealing with, okay? This is somebody that... Um, Never mind the, the, the name of this card. Whenever I see somebody like this, or whenever this card comes out, I, I look at it as um, somebody who's like, their heart has been open. It's like their heart chakra has been activated, okay? This is a person that has been, uh, that, that takes many, many risks in life, okay? They've been hurt many, many times. I mean, you know, he's he's lost an eye. 
his hair is all disheveled. He's got that that tree in the pit of his stomach, which means it's somebody who's a very old soul. They've uh, been reincarnated many, many times. They've learned many, many lessons. They're a very old soul. And I also feel like, you know, they're, they're very much guided by their intuition and they're not afraid to take risks. You, on the other hand, are very, very risk averse. And I feel like some of you might stay in a situation that is past its expiration date because you, 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 you hang on, you try to fix things. And I feel like there's definitely a situation here where you're staying in it, possibly a love relationship, and you're not feeling that excitement anymore. You're not feeling like it's gonna, you know, last your life, your entire lifetime. It feels a little bit dry. It feels a little bit uninspiring. It feels like you're not talking to the other person anymore. And it just feels to me like the the passion and the chemistry might be gone out of that relationship. You're definitely torn between this here. Do I move ahead and make a, you know, um, like seek more opportunities, restart my dating life, going out into the world, breaking free from this, going out into the world and find the one I truly love? Or do I stay in this situation that is subpar but bearable because it's the safer choice, because of duties, because of obligation, because that is what ex is expected of me. And if I stray from it, people might oppose my choice. So I feel like you're definitely in a relationship here where there's a lot of expectations and it could even be family, social, whatever expectations. And it's, it's something that you wanna walk away from because you feel like your heart wants something else but you're not at a point where you can, you know, you're not at a point where you, you're, you're ready just yet. Um, you know, I also feel like on the other hand, this is also for many of you changing jobs, okay? Um, many of you might be in a public sector or especially in a work environment that is very institutionalized and that is very safe. So this is what I would call like education, like uh, in an institution of education, college, university, high school, whatever. Um, and then I also feel like it's very safe. There's pension, there's retirement, there's a union even. And then I feel like the, you're, you're contemplating, you know, like, should I try something else? Should I try something a little bit entrepreneurial? Should I try something a little bit more creative? The King of Cups, the cup energy rules creativity. It rules our heart, it rules our passion, it rules the things that are not as safe, but it has a really strong, undeniable pull. And it's pulling us in that direction. And I feel like many of you might be ending something in order to start something brand new that might not be as safe, but I feel like it pulls and tugs so much at your heartstring that it's undeniable. For others of you, I feel like, you know, you're going against tradition. You're definitely like um, flipping over. I'm, I'm seeing like, you know that expression, like so-and-so would um, turn over in their grave. It's because you're defying years and years and decades or even like you know generations of expectations um you're you're going after what your heart wants and i feel like in the process you know people might not understand people might be like this naysayers or people telling you you know what are you doing why are you trying to stand out why are you trying to go against tradition why are you trying to be an oddball this is not like you are you having a midlife crisis or why are you doing this they're not going to understand but I feel like for you guys, Taurus, you guys are so, so, so patient. And you know, you work at things and you hang on and you don't swim upstream, right? That's not what Taurus people do. But you know when enough's enough. Ten of Swords, the end of the line. You know when something is, is like past its expiration date. Well, you know when something can't be fixed. You know what your heart is really yearning after. And people can talk, people can, you know, defy, people can can tell you that's a bad idea, don't go for it. But I feel like at this point in your life, you're just like, 
I've worked at it. I've worked at it. Don't tell me I haven't tried. Don't tell me I haven't given it my all. Don't tell me I've exhausted all possibility. Don't tell me that I didn't do enough because I feel like you, there is a situation here. You're like, it's not going to get fixed. It's not going to work. Okay. And so you're ready for something new. Um, what I'm feeling here for many of you, I feel like you're reliving a situation in the past or you might be thinking about something that happened in the past. And let me just see how recent this is, okay? I keep seeing that tent, the, the, the memory bank. Flipping through the Rolodex, going through the memory bank, um, possibly going through like, uh, you know how back, well, back in the day, this is recent um we have like the 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 desktop computers and the pc and if the pc is um it, it stores all the information right so some of you might be hooking up to old computers and trying to access pictures from old computers um looking at photo like memorabilia or photographs you might be uh, going to see family members they might have older pictures of you and you're you're possibly looking at that um so i definitely have here a very strong person that you are very very much emotionally invested in a really strong person someone who's very spiritual as well someone who's very much single okay but let me just see how recent is this that memory bank can you tell me what's in it a time when you didn't have as much responsibility a time when life wasn't as hard ten of uh, wands this is you know being inundated with a lot of responsibility a lot of chores a lot of tasks a lot of things that you have to do when it's in the reverse, it's sort of like when these things didn't weigh down, when these things didn't matter, when you could make decisions freely. And then I have as well, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or this is a time where, you know, you, you had a lot of messages. You had, you were possibly single, possibly hearkening back to a time where you were single or um, I'm sensing as well maybe even the september time frame of last year 2018 okay so going through the memory bank going reliving a time or it might have been somebody that you've met during that time or somebody you were with or somebody that you were thinking about okay so i'm seeing a lot of bachelorhood so i don't know if there are a lot of taurian males watching this but I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, a time where we could make decisions, a time when we weren't weighed down with a lot of responsibilities, a time when we can give our love freely. Um, some of you might be in a relationship and I feel like the relationship is kind of like on its last leg. It um, seems like a, it's not going to happen in an abrupt screeching halt, but I feel like it's heading towards the inevitable. And you have something new, something brand new in the picture. And I see a lot of trepidation about starting this new thing. Ace of coins for some of you, this could be a work situation too. It's like something might be coming to a screeching halt. You have a decision to make. And I feel like, you know, opting for the new, okay? What do you advise here for Taurus people? What I have here is the Queen of Wands, and this is sort of like being nourished, okay? So this is a like the Fairy Godmother card, okay? Whatever nourishes you, whatever makes you thrive, whatever allows you to grow, it's never going to be a bad thing. So as pragmatic as you are, if you are confronted with a decision, right? The head or heart choice do we go with what are what stirs our passion or do we make that rational choice I feel like this is a card that comes in to tell you that there isn't really a right or a wrong choice it's just every choice that we make 
provides us with a, with a new experience that will allow us to grow. So I feel like you give yourself a lot of anxiety and a lot of unnecessary stress by looking down the path of each individual choice that you have to make when in fact you should approach it like it's a new choice it creates a new path and each path that i take will, will provide me with a different experience that will allow me to grow i might grow at a different rate or i might grow you know into a different person but it really doesn't detract me from who i am it's just an, an additional growth experience. So looking at things, looking at life in that lens, I feel is going to allow you to free yourself. It's almost like the justification that you need in order for you to move away from something that you're not happy with, to be in something that brings you a lot more joy. And at the same time, it's justification that you need in order for you to not dilly dally with a decision not waste any more time and kind of like, you know, seize the day, live life to the fullest. So I'm seeing here that you've been the responsible one, the wise one, the one that hangs on and fixes things. And you're at a point where you don't want to fix it anymore. And that's okay, Taurus. So solar return, once again, take stock of where we've been. Are we happy here? If not, what can we do? where do where do we go from here you have a lot of good things coming into the future for you you definitely have somebody in your miss that's like um love is very under the surface there's definitely somebody there and i feel like a lot of the times you might try to block out this person but their memory keeps coming back you might have already met this person in like the um september time frame last year Okay, but either way, I feel like there's um, contemplation about a choice, like about travel, about coming to see this person, about trying to, you know, uh, reunite or revive things, but you're definitely scoping out this person. Um, I'm seeing heavy energy about somebody, you know, checking up on you. Um, I don't want to say spy because that's always very creepy. Um, but I feel like they're they're checking up on you. They're trying. They're 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 locking things away in their memory bank. Like if you tell them something, like oh, I really like you know the color blue. They always um, lock down those things that you say that reveals your your likes and dislikes, your preferences. And I feel like they they keep those things in their memory rolodex so that they know more about you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Taurus. I wish you all the best. Happy solar return and I will be back for your May reading uh, soon. Take care of yourself, all right?